hands. Snap back like a rubber band. Pretty thing with a suntan, make it bounce back when you do the dance. Call my song, we should push the pick. See your things through a different lens. Live it fast, only one chance. Never pants, how we do the plans. Right? I practice what I preach. They like a put around my way, then get lost to see. Not sure what you wanted, but I'm what you need. I know my heart just started, but I hit a peak, yeah. Wave, used to just wanna blend in. Big flex, how I do the syntax now that I got the attention. On the rig, you make it really hard, I just wanna be friends. Treat the night like a vignette for what's coming next, hard to see the end. Yeah, I tread water in the deep end. I'll die young and live plenty days in my defense. In real life, we just pretend, let him sleep in. We should life feeling like I never ended repeat of the weekend. I can't weekend. believe it. <laughs> yeah. Got it, Switch up how I breathe every time I see it. Yeah. Knowing what you want, I know just what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing, I got you falling through for the weekend. Since I put it down, how you need it? Bet I make it all don't wanna leave. It ain't nobody really it's been added something rigorous. I traded in the cars, it was lost for the dividends. I'm calm, but the temperament but strong when I pencil in. Phone steady, jumping, screaming calls like I'm pipping. Bricks got everybody tapping in, but you've been kept it solid. When you look me in the eyes, subtle tell I know you got it. When you do the sauce, make me want it a la carte. Caught me looking at it like the bullseye of the target. Double tap it. <laughs> Since day one, but I'm seasoned. But the working off season. Talk like they ball hard when all they really do is reach in. Limit time, hear a small talk. Speaking dreams to existence like a young king at the Lincoln. Big facts, funny pretense. Link up, we can sync up. Been in the field off the long snap. Pack a big talk, better sink in to the whole squad. Get a ring ting. Let the ops tell us thing then. Recent life feeling like I never end the repeat. I can't weekend. believe it. Yeah. Wait. Switch up how I breathe every time I see it. Yeah. Knowing what you want, I know just what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Got you falling through for the weekend Since I put it down, how you need it Bet I make it all, don't wanna leave it Switch up how I breathe every time I see it Benjamin Dixon starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, people. I almost forgot to say it. <laughs> I'm about to say, man. I was like, I was like, whoa, whoa. There's a there's a hesitation in the good morning this morning. What's what is happening? Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it. Today is Monday. It is May third, two thousand and twenty one. We made it to May, brother. We are five months into the twenty twenty one. Man, these five months went by quick as hell. Ben, do you realize that, dude? Bruh, they have gone by so fast. I'm still having flashbacks of like. February and what well, yeah know, um, <laughs> I'm still thinking we're in the middle of February and here right. we are I'm about to be I'm about to turn 41 here in a few in a few weeks here my birthday's oh, in June day, so ben. I'm about to be an old man here in a minute man <laughs> that's right you know because of your birthday this is basically what got me here sir so yeah it's a big that's, ass celebration for you that's right that yeah, was the first yeah. time we had you come through you came through for my yeah. birthday and you DJ'd the party and the after party and yeah that's what's yeah. up well that's, man that's look, where it started at man they, they shout man. out to you <laughs> oh thank you man thank you well <laughs> well let's talk to the audience real quick before we get into the news and politics good morning everybody on facebook twitter twitch stream everywhere that you're locked in we appreciate you watching us this morning um we want to i'm gonna be real quick with this we need your help 
We need your support. I need you to go become a patron. We are building something here and it is a work in progress. It's not finished, but I promise you when we get this thing to where it's going to be, we're going to change. Do we're going to do our thing. James, right. we're going to be speaking to enough people to have the impact that needs to be had. This has never been about, um, to be sure, I'm not a media person. I'm not like a journalist. I'm not, I, I'm just a dude who got something to say who turn on the microphone and, and start saying it, right? Right. And and then I realized, oh, there's, there's people who need to hear or appreciate what I have to say. And and now I know what has to be said has to be said at a level of reach that we are capable of getting, yeah. but we can't do it without you. We need 500 patrons. And if you're watching this, whether you're watching it on play or repeat, um, I need you to help support what we're doing um, here until this point. Like we've, I have, you know, we tell you every day to go become a patron. We say that every day, right? But I'm making a personal appeal to all of you because we are doing something here that we can really have some serious impact once we get it structured and settled in and the, and the cement starts to, to, to rest and settle in and you see what we've been trying to put together here. It's still a work in progress and we're going to get there. Rebecca's going to be joining us here shortly and we'll get the uh, all the news and politics going. But I didn't want to I'd be remiss as they as the old folks say. I'd be remiss if I didn't just tell you very directly that we need your help. We need your support. Um, we need you to go become a patron at any level that you can become a patron. Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. If you're a patron of the Benjamin Dixon show, stay a patron of the Benjamin Dixon show. Right. I'm still putting out. Uh, I'll be putting out podcasts separately uh, so that you guys can hear me just go on my rants for 30 minutes straight. Right. Um, we'll keep all those things going. But most importantly, what we're trying to cultivate here is a community that can spread the word about everything that we're talking about because we're not, listen, you can go get new, you can go get the news updates anyway, right? Anywhere. Right. James, you can, right. if you, if you, if you come here just looking for the news, you may as well go on over to CNN and, 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 and MSNBC and just see what's happening. But every single person that we have on the show, every person that we bring on, they're delivering a core message that folks need to hear. And we're just wrapping it in news. We're going to be wrapping it in joy. We're going to, y'all know what we're trying to do. So I'm just making that appeal this morning. Um, you know how you watch NPR and then, or you listen to NPR and then uh, all of a sudden they have like an entire week long of um, begging you for money. I'm not going to do it all week long, but I am going to make the appeal <laughs> one more time this morning. Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. All right. That said, James, you ready to get into some of this news, man? Yeah, look, man, let's get to it real quick to pick you off, Ben, y'all. Yes. Yes, please, please help. <laughs> Go. Hey, if you want, Go. if you want Re Rebecca and I to make sure that we stay here and stay around, and we're able to bring you all of this stuff, and you still want to hear the voice of God, yes, become a patient today. You too can sponsor the like the <laughs> two children for fifty cents a day. <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing. But no, for real, y'all. Make sure y'all go join Like It or Not. Patreon.com slash Like It or Not. So get there. Go do hey, it. Love y'all meeting. Hey, okay. hey, listen. And folks who, folks who don't know, the voice of God is Dwayne. Dwayne is in the right. background. He's the one who's throwing all the switches that makes us look. Uh, he makes us look even more professional than our cameras. Like, like he yes. takes our cameras. <laughs> Throws it into the thing and he got the thing swooshing and things moving in the background, the media coming up. And every now and then he just drops in and say, hey, hey listen, everybody, this is what okay. I need y'all to know. You're right. So that's hey, that's hey, who he's hey, talking hey, about. Y'all know that. Uh, so just, 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 right? I thought that was him for real. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do a pretty damn good Dwayne impersonation. You that's do, all right. some pretty good impersonations, man. I think we need to work on our sketch. You do you do uh, uh, Donald Trump one day. I'm going to do uh, Barack Obama. We just, we just do a couple of skits here. Some, of talents, some impersonation <laughs> talents. All right. Right. Um, so we uh, obviously we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And with those new that kind of news, it's always um, it's always difficult to discuss the number of people who have been affected and have died from COVID-19 in this country. But it is part of of what we have to do here. The number of daily coronaviruses um, still in India cross four hundred thousand for the first time, the highest for any nation. Uh, President Joe Biden has banned travel from India to the United States while offering medical supplies in the United States. Weekly infections were at the lowest level since mid-October. New York State reported the fewest daily deaths in more than five months. As of May 1st, 
796,679 new cases have been reported worldwide with 3.197 million uh, people having lost their lives across the globe. Uh, One billion doses of over one billion doses of vaccine have been administered globally in the United States. We have reported 44,000 new cases, making our total count 32.4 million cases with 576,000 deaths. At least 146 million have received their first dose of the COVID vaccine. And while 103.4 million have been fully vaccinated. So we're making progress here in the United States, but it is still very much so a pandemic. And we need to, um, as the old folks say, govern ourselves accordingly. Uh, Miami Center Academy had to be Miami, Florida, has been gaining a lot of attention lately with their conspiracy theories and open opinions of COVID-19. But odd behavior isn't anything new uh, for the husband of wife founders. Uh, During the school's first open house, they pledged to mold their students into, quote, emotional ninjas. In the background of all this passionate speech were windows covered to shield everyone inside from the potential radiation from 5G cell towers. Then there were non-disclosure agreements required from employees of employees who wanted to quit or parents who wanted to withdraw their schools. So when Center sent an email last week warning staff at the private school's two campuses not to take the coronavirus vaccine in the process of spreading misinformation about drug safety and raising questions about whether the school is violating the rights of employees to seek health care involved with the schools, uh, they were obviously surprised. Mark Richard, an attorney who represents the United Teachers Union of Dade, uh, United Faculty in Miami-Dade College, said a policy that bars employees from taking the vaccine could violate the Americans with Disabilities Act as it interferes with the right to get medical treatment, especially for employees who are at higher risk. So we covered this last week, and this is the same school that told their employees um, that they should not take the vaccine. And I want to read, um, I want to read, I want, uh, Dwayne, do me a favor and bring that quote back on the screen because I want to read that again for the audience because I want them to see very clearly. Um, it says, until further notice, we ask any employee who has not yet taken the experimental COVID-19 injection to wait until the end of the school year. We also recommended that all faculty and staff hold off on taking the injection until there's further research available on whether this experimental drug is impacting unvaccinated individuals. Now, we read that to you last week, but I wanted to give you this update because of the level of absurdity of what's going on and what is possibly, uh, James, I believe is one of the underlying factors that is not only undermining our ability to get out of COVID, but it is also a level of ignorance and stupidity that is cherished in this country. It's almost like we reward the very worst in human nature. We reward greed with capitalism, right? We discuss that all the time. But in this case, here are people who are in charge of educating children and they are able to get away with being the absolute worst in terms of spreading misinformation and disinformation in this case um, with putting their own children and their staff at risk. They're saying it's in the name of science because they want to make sure that this experimental drug doesn't hurt people uh, who have been unvaccinated. And it's like at every, at every level, it's a level of ignorance and absurdity, but yet these are the people who are in charge, man. Like, do you ever wait? I I wake up some mornings and I'm like, this is terrifying to think that I got more sense than the people who are running this country sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I got more (laughs) sense than the people teaching some of our kids. And I definitely got more sense than a lot of these people who got all the money to make all the changes. But, dude, these are the people who are in charge. And at this school, they're the people who run and operate the school, putting these children's lives at risk, and you know, James, you know it just had to happen in Miami, Florida, man. It, it, <laughs> of course, it had to happen in Florida, man. And that's so crazy because they they're like experimental. Like y'all do realize, right? This is the SARS 
what is it SARS two COVID version whatever it is. So right. there was already basically vaccines and trials already in the works. So when this new variant came along and start uh, doing this rampage with this new uh, pandemic or whatever, so finding a vaccine wasn't as difficult. I'm not gonna say it wasn't as difficult, but we had a lot of the information already to get the there's damn science. Vaccine there's and make science it, there. Make it right. It's science. Yeah. So for them to say that, and Ben, did I hear you say that they put up paper to block out the five G radiation, bro? <laughs> at the school, man. Dude, they put up because because as we all know, paper stops radiation. <laughs> right? You know, I'm like paper. never never mind like never mind you know the need for six foot you know six foot thick lead or you know hazmat <laughs> right. suits or. You know, you know, you know, environmental suits. That, never mind that. We're just gonna put some paper up because that's gonna stop it. And and when I was when I was in that story, I'm like, dude, they're they're mixing they're they're mixing up their um. This COVID nineteen has broken a lot of minds. <laughs> so for everybody that's listening, I put up a white piece of paper to shield me from the radiation from the light that I have in my face right now. Okay, so granted, it's still. <laughs> Damn there. Just, just saying. <laughs> IJS. But I digress, man. My bad. Continue, sir. No, man. No, but they're mixing up. Like, COVID has broken. It, it makes that much sense, though. I mean, really. Li- ri- right. Literally. <laughs> COVID has, has, I'm not going to say it broke the minds of Americans. It exposed just how, mm. how ignorant, how ignorance can abound, man. Like, like when nobody can tell you nothing. And when anybody has a platform, everybody could cut on a camera, much like we're doing, right? We just cut on this camera and we get out here and we present ourselves as authorities on the different issues, right? Um, But so too, there's an entire segment of America that has the ability to cut on, and, and, and society in general, not just America, they cut on the camera and they start saying stuff. And because they say it with a level of confidence, people believe them. Mm-hmm. and in COVID, we've seen like the merger of so many different um, obsessions and derangements and misinformation. And they are managing to combine the worst of all of it. Because now they're like, the vaccine is bad. The vaccine has a tracking device. The vaccine has the mark of the beast. The vaccine causes 5G radiation. Oh, no, that's the te- cell phone tower. It's going to, oh, the cell phone tower, that's what's giving you COVID. Like, it's all of the stupid things at the same time that are being exposed by COVID-19. And so where like when, when COVID-19 first came around, um, most of my coverage was about how most of my coverage was about how it exposed the government because it really has exposed the fact that this government doesn't care about us. Like, I, I mean, they're still trying to open up schools and kids aren't vaccinated and children are dying from this. Maybe not at a at a at a rate that the government cares about. Maybe it's in the maybe it's in the margin of error that they're comfortable with, like point zero one percent. But, yeah, I don't want my kids to be that point zero one percent. But that's just another example of how this government really has failed us in covid-19, both the Trump administration, the Biden administration. They're doing better in terms of their language and and how they're positioning themselves and how they are uh, addressing it. But they're still trying to open up schools. And and thankfully, I think I heard Joe Biden over the weekend said he's going to he's going to he's going to pump the brakes on that. Right. Good. Okay. But overall, this government. And the fact that we're getting very close to 600,000 people being dead, it's a complete and total abject failure. Now, that's what COVID exposed very clearly. But it also exposed that the population, we got some dummies out here, bro. <laughs> some, <laughs> a whole lot of them, bro. <laughs> we got a lot of stupid people in this country. And we have grifters who are more than happy to take advantage of their ignorance or their naivete or their, their, you know, they, they just, they're not wired to process or they're not, they're not critical thinkers. I like, I don't want to just call them stupid. It could be any number of things. Some of it is intentional. Some of them are intentionally obtuse, but there are enough misinformation, disinformation agents 
and people who just cut on a microphone and cut on a camera and get out there and tell you that the 5G towers is going to kill you and the mark of the beast is in the vaccine and they get enough views for that to become a part of how we think in this country. And so now we're dealing right. at a level where there's so many people in this country who absolutely are not thinking clearly, man. They're not they, they they're not thinking clearly about how we approach this vaccine, how we approach COVID-19 in general. They're not thinking clearly. And there's plenty of information out there, disinformation out there that's going to guarantee that it confirms the very worst idea they came up with. And so now we see this manifest down in Miami. They're like, you know, and, 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 and it's not just some it's not just some random Florida person. It's people who run an entire damn school. They run the school and now they are putting up paper to protect themselves from 5G radiation. OK, and now they're telling people not to get vaccinated. And these are the people who have power over communities. These are the people who are like pastors over churches. These are the people who are like elected officials because that stupidity is not uh, 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 the politicians are obviously not immune to that level of ignorance because they they're drenched in it. But but dude. James, these are the people running our country. Mm -hmm. And some of the people who are telling the truth, like us, you know, we got like 500 people watching on a good day. On a good day, right? The ignorance spreads so much faster than the truth, mm. which is why we know we need you to go to mm. patreon.com forward slash like it or not so we can <laughs> spread the truth. <laughs> I like how you did that. That was a good one. That was a good one, too. I'm so serious, was, though. <laughs> right. Uh, Mara in the chat was saying that the one about the, the nanotechnology being in the vi uh, vaccine to uh, change the DNA or whatever. I just want y'all to know, ain't nothing happened to me. I ain't got no superpowers yet, so I guess it didn't work. I wish. Do something man, creative, man. Flying around here all Girl, over the place. Dude, what talking about? <laughs> just give me, like, I don't know what superpower. Which, okay, okay, so if you were a superhero, you would, be, you would have, like, flying powers, right? Um, give me super strength of flying, but I think flying, I think I'd just be good with the flying, man. Maybe oh, telekinesis. Man. Maybe telekinesis. Telekine telekinesis is good. <laughs> I don't know what superpower I would have, um, but I'd be dangerous. Don't give me any superpowers because okay. I'm, I'm a crazy dude. <laughs> uh, let's, be right, let's, mastermind. Like, no, no, don't bro, do it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a uh, turn into dark side around here. Anyway, I digress okay. the point. <laughs> Um, let's go to some more news. And, and speaking of ignorance and disingenuousness, Stephen Miller. On Sunday, Stephen Miller appeared on Fox News with host uh, Maria Baratoma, however you pronounce her name, <laughs> to discuss why he's suing the Biden, Biden administration on behalf of white people. The summary of it is Miller says that it's unlawful for the Biden administration to allocate five billion to black farmers who had been denied federal aid due to discrimination in the past. I want you to understand that very clearly what President Biden is doing. He's allocating five billion dollars to black farmers, farmers who in the past have been denied federal aid due to discrimination. Stephen Miller says that this is unlawful. He also discusses the policy of catch and release. But I want us to focus in on his attempt to sue the Biden administration on behalf of white people. Let's take a look at it. And I am back with former White House senior advisor Stephen Miller. Stephen, tell us about the lawsuit, the two lawsuits that you recently filed. You are also the outside counsel and partnering with A.G. Paxton on the catch and release situation. Walk us through it. Yeah, so we filed two lawsuits, one lawsuit to ensure that farm aid is delivered irrespective of one's race and ethnicity. The Biden administration has specifically excluded people solely based on skin color. That's outrageous. Now, friend and sister of the show, Anoa Changa, said in an article on news for News One, she noted that during the Trump administration, white farmers overwhelmingly benefit from the federal aid programs. Almost all of the 26 billion in pandemic related aid administered by the Trump administration went to white farmers. This includes up to 14 billion set aside last fall for certain types of producers, including corn and dairy farmers. Now, before the passage of the debt relief for socially disadvantaged farmers, only 0.1 percent. Only 0.1 percent of pandemic aid went to black farmers. Stephen Miller is saying that by Joe Biden trying to correct a wrong, that Joe Biden is committing a wrong. He's saying that Joe Biden's attempt. I can't say Biden. <laughs> I can't pronounce people's <laughs> names. I'm saying like Biden. And I don't know what I'm Biden. saying. <laughs> but 
in Joe Biden's attempt, I'm just going to use my country accent, let's just go with it, his right. attempt to correct the discrimination that is historic and documented. We got the receipts of the discrimination. Stephen Miller saying that that itself is discrimination. And so what they are setting the precedent for, what they're saying is that the attempt to correct historical wrongs that were based and committed on racism is itself racism. He's going to, and now he actually may win this case. Despite the absurdity of it all, one, because Donald Trump has packed the federal judiciary up and down. And so he has a favorable. He's, he literally has people who are going to be deciding on this case at whatever level of appeals it has to go to people who he has probably Stephen Miller has had some contact with because Donald Trump appointed so many federal judges. That said, the argument is that if you try to correct racism it is racism. What does that do? That absolutely leaves everything as it is. It makes it impossible for us to address historical wrong, which it sets the foundation to undermine our fight for reparations. Because as we all know on this show, this country owes black people because we built it. And y'all ain't gave us nothing. We've had to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. If you want to see people who pull themselves by, up by the bootstraps, take a look at Mary McLeod Bethune, who started a school with what? Two dollars and fifty cents. A dollar and fifty. We've been a dollar and fifty. My man, that's what I got you here for. <laughs> the fact, though, and thank you for Wildcat, because the Wildcat Nation was going to come from my head there. They but were, yeah. the point, the the point is, I knew it was a lot. It wasn't no. It was it was it was less. It was right. so little and we have had so little in this country. And what Stephen Miller is trying to be on the forefront of is saying that any attempt to rectify historical wrongs that were committed because of racism is itself racism. And you know what? They're going to be there probably probably will be a court to agree with them. Mm. They're probably going to be a lot of people who agree because this is now this is now their thing. Now their thing is this. Oh, you can't talk about racism because. Talking about racism is racist. Oh, you can't help black people in this country because targeting people to give them a benefit is based on their race is racism. So now they consider themselves You even got some of these 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 these. Um, I want to call them subhuman racists like Nick Fuentes. Um, he thinks he's white, but your last name betrays you, Nick. He considers himself a civil rights advocate and the way they consider themselves civil rights advocate is because now they're saying, oh, black folks are trying to get some equity in this country. Gay people are trying to get some equity in this country. Uh, 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 Muslims are trying to get some equity in this country. Well, the attempt to get equity in this country is an affront to our civil rights as white people. And so they present themselves in the national conversation as though they are civil rights advocates. But what they're doing is they're trying to weaponize our fight for civil rights as a tool to keep us from getting equity in this country. You see that game? You see how that yeah. that little jujitsu, that little judo, racist judo that they're doing? They're shifting the weight of the argument in this country, taking our arguments and now saying that because... We have set the precedent for civil rights in this country that all men are created, all men, non-gender conforming individuals are, are created equal, all those kind of things. If we make any attempt to fix the wrongs in the past, then that itself is the grossest form of racism that we could have in this country. And you know what? That's the argument that they're running with. And it's going to win with a lot of people. But um, we'll see. We shall see. Uh, that said, I digress. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's... um. It's a reality. Um, yeah. Take us to a break, man. <laughs> yeah, I got when we you. come back, we got a whole lot more, a whole lot more likely than not to cover news, politics, and everything else. We'll be right back after this. Who I said I wasn't gonna play this shit. We're gonna wait to play that so I can get these patrons read off. Good morning again, everybody. Good morning, Mama. Good morning, Sensation. Good morning to my daddy too, y'all. For 
keep forgetting my daddy. I know he's listening as well, y'all. Shout out to everybody that's checking us out this morning. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Like it or not, so Instagram and Facebook. Like it or not, so and as always, make sure that you support and become a patron, y'all. We love you. We appreciate it. All right, so let's get into some of these new patrons. Let's see here. Money bags, no events, snap back like a rubber band. Pretty thing with a suntan, make it bounce back. All right. Our new patrons for Monday morning, we have Soya S, Sarah Q, Paul H. We have Dusty Torres, I'm sorry, Dusty Torres, who subscribed with Prom, Anna Sierra, who subscribed with Prom, and also C Snipe 24, who subscribed for four months with Prom, y'all. Thank y'all so much to the new patrons, y'all. You too can become a patron as well to the show. Patreon.com, like it or not. Patreon.com slash like it or not, y'all. Support, 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 support. Love you, mean it, y'all. Shout out to everybody this morning that's in the chat room. I see y'all. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Oh yeah, now this is what I was trying to get to. Shout out to everybody. Good morning, Alicia, Goku, Chuck, Diesel. Don't break anything, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Like the world is on our side Nothing On and on, good morning, good morning Courtney, Lisa, good morning, y'all Melanie, good morning And ooh, baby When we're together, you and I Your touch sends chills down my spine Shout out sensation, he says, happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday, Mama Gwen. What's your cash app so I can send you a birthday gift? Look at sensation. This is, okay. Okay. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning. People will travel far and It's true, the dragon. He said it's a lullaby. I'm taking long bleaks. <laughs> Christopher Shaw, I appreciate you, sir. I appreciate you. Nat A, good morning. Wherever we go, I'm on cloud nine. So high. She had a whole attitude with this shit. Can y'all hear me? Take me away, girl. To one new level, new level. It's the good morning. Good morning, good morning, Tyler. We hope you had a good uh, birthday, sir. Get Merrington, get Merrington. Brenda, good morning, Brenda. Shout out to everybody that's streaming on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere that you're going now, y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, mom, huh. Y'all, my mama dropped a cash app in the chat, and guess what her cash app is? Granny drawers. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. 
Yo, <laughs> yo, let's get back to some more like it or not. But before that, y'all, I want y'all to look at this video. Just that's all I'm gonna say. Look at this. Watch this. Just because I do not want critical race theory taught to my children in school does not mean that I'm a racist, damn it. <laughs> I don't go to school. That's why you bopping, girl. <laughs> she, she, hey, Rebecca. Morning. Hey, How morning, you doing? Rebecca. I just wanted to play that clip. Uh, I don't even know who she is. Um, but she's at, at a town hall meeting this weekend and they're focusing on critical race theory. And she's like, just because I don't want my kids taught critical race theory in school doesn't mean I'm a racist. No, yeah, it does. It basically does. Wait, it does because it. all critical race, I mean, <clears throat> critical race theory is essentially just helping people to understand the fundamental nature of white supremacy in this country. And the fact that people are fighting so hard, it's trending on Twitter right now. And there's so many people who are trying to fight back against the ability of universities to even offer courses in critical race theory. Like, ain't nobody, ain't nobody teaching it on, at, the, at the high school, elementary school level. They're talking about universities being able to offer courses in critical race theory. And you got all these white folks around the country uh, who are like, along with uh, some of their useful idiots um, in who, who have the same shade as we do, um, who are acting like the idea of teaching people about racism is itself racism. And that's what she's crying about, Rebecca and James, which I think. White folks, listen, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Nice to see you guys. It's, uh, you know. It's a gloomy day out here. Um, you know, I feel that those people who don't want the truth to be told to their kids are, you know, protectors of white supremacy. And, and it's not because they don't want their kids to know. What's, no, it is because they don't want their kids they to know. They don't want their kids to know. <laughs> they, That's they, it. Don't want, they, they don't want their kids to know the truth. And um, so... It, it, and what I was going to say was that it's not because they don't want the kids to know because of, oh, they're too young. Da, da, da. They just really don't want their kids to know, period, what the truth is um, about people who look like them and what they've done here and around the world. My God. So it's like, you know, I don't know, like teaching kids about true history and what's really happening and what's really happened. It's going to let them understand that, dang, I come from either, you know, I come from this and I can make a change here. It could, you don't know what it could bring. Right. Well, white folks will coddle and try to make it <sighs> seem like they've never done a thing. Um, you know, racism was 400 some years ago. Right. Um, you know, like uh, slavery, um, you know, we, our family didn't, to have anything to do with slavery. Right. Uh, we were indentured slaves ourselves. You know, they like those <laughs> stories. They like those storylines. And, you know, Christopher Columbus did what he had to do. And that's why we have America today. So mm. that's what they want to um, keep us focused on. Here, it's actually in Georgia. Every time I go hiking up the mountains, you know, I'll be at Stone Mountain and I'll be at the Kennesaw Mountain. You know, black folks always call things the the Kroger, the Winn Dixie, the Kennesaw Mountain. You know, I go to the, you know, and I'll hike and I'll see those uh, monuments left. You know, the Confederacy mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll be looking like this one, even yours to fight for, my God. But um, you know, and they'll be trying to make it something that it's not. And in the beginning, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is incredible. But you know what I would do after when I first started hiking there, I would go and do my own research and learn about what happened there and then realize what was really going on in those areas, the mills that used to be there, like the one in yeah. Roswell and the history with that and the slaves and the, 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 the it's just all kinds of crazy. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting when you really learn about these monuments um, and what they really stand for and what they're really about and who yeah, really was yeah. owning that territory and that land. But these white folks and, you know, these Karens and these soccer moms, um, you know, I, it's I really the same folks who marched up the steps of the Capitol. I guarantee same you that. Folks, uh, same, same folks. Same same lady that got same lady that got a fist to the face for mm -hmm. disrespecting a black woman. So, you know, um, they gonna learn. I want to read. I want to read this quick definition. So if anybody needs like a, a precise definition of critical race theory. It is an academic movement of civil rights scholars and activists in the United States who seek to critically examine the law as it intersects with the issues of race and to challenge mainstream approaches to racial justice. I'm sorry. Um, what's the problem with that? The problem is, is that they. 
They don't want this system to change one bit. They, that's the bottom line. Let's, let's just start there. Their complaints about critical race theory is a tool itself to ensure that we never rectify the problem of white supremacy in this country. <laughs> Period. That's, that's what it is. And so they hype up critical race theory to be something that it's not. Because run, one thing, it's not being taught at the school level, at, at, at the grade school level. It's in universities. But ah, you can't make people really afraid of something that's happening at universities, right? And then so they say, okay, well, they're going to be teaching your kids. You see how they generalize that, right? They go from teaching your college age kids and they generalize it and say, we're going to be teaching your kids. And now mm -hmm. you have Fox News and everyone talk, oh, they're teaching your kids that they are the oppressor. That's not what this is. Mm -hmm. It's not the, what, what, what we teaching them is, is that this is a system of oppression that, that fundamentally targets black people and brown people and people of color, but specifically black people. It is a system of oppression, but you are not yourself an oppressor unless you actively participate in that oppression. Are you a beneficiary of white supremacy and, and, and white privilege? Well, yeah. I mean, just like I don't have to worry about like none of the w problems that women have to worry about because they are women because I'm not a woman. And so I have male privilege in that way. Does that mean that I, you know, does that, does that shake the foundations of my world? And all of a sudden, I think because we do something for women because of what they face in this country, specifically that it's an affront to men. Well, talk to the men's rights ad advocates because they, they, a lot of them really do believe that they fundamentally believe that if you <laughs> roll back any level of their power, that that is oppression to them. And so mm. when they say critical race theory, that's what all they're saying is like, I don't want this taught in my schools. Nobody trying to teach it to your little raggedy kid, Karen. Nobody trying to teach that to your kid till they get to the university and they could take a, take a course themselves. But that doesn't sell on Fox News and that doesn't help keep and protect their power. <laughs> what they're trying to do is kill this movement of people really understanding how race intersects in this country. And they're trying to kill it in its inception before it gets any further, because that means if we fix the problem, like we talked about Stephen Miller, if you fix the problem of the discrimination that these these farmers have faced in funding, that means you need to give them money. And they don't want that money going to black farmers. They want mm. that money staying with the white farmers. That's what the, that's what's going on right here. So. That's on period. That's <laughs> on period. Hello, Lamb. That's it. That's it. That's it. Y'all want to see uh, something stupid? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I definitely want to see something. Is it funny or is it like stupid? Oh, it's funny. Make me angry. Okay. It's going to make you angry, but it's also <laughs> going to make you. It's also going to make you laugh. I want okay. to take a look at this clip. This is it. This dude's name is Kelvin Dingle. <laughs> that in itself. His is name. Itself. His, is itself. his 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 cop name on his shirt on his badge. You're gonna see. He's called. Major Dingle. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait till you hear what this clown had to say. Let's take a look at it. I wake up every morning and kiss sad, my family up. goodbye. Knowing that there's a possibility I won't come home. I am tired of every time I wake up in the morning, there's someone else polarizing the fact that maybe law enforcement is just not a good thing. All of us are not bad. I am not as they are. Most of us are not. There are bad people in every career. I'm so goddamn tired. 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 <laughs> He got more, he got more, he got more. He got more. I give everything. <laughs> I think, I it's honestly the, think he added me. the music. I honestly no. think he added the music. <laughs> it was the church, it was the church voice for me. Taya, what? Where, where, where did you, how? <laughs> Cause <he's, laughs> what, why? Because you know he's but, somebody what, preacher. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's funny because yeah. so so he was mad because because he's a cop and everybody's saying and, that and all people like cop, cop, cops, cops are bad, bad or whatever. Yeah. So let me tell y'all yeah. because a quick story. It's not with a story. I have a friend um, who I grew up with. Every time we go out, that's my dance buddy. I'll be like, kill it, kill it, kill it. We always be killing it, right? And he became a cop uh, maybe about four or five years ago, uh, and he is now <laughs> like a lieutenant. And is he a, when, is he a major dingle? No, I'm sorry. Uh, Mm, he could he actually he he appeared as one uh, or he definitely was in the same um, emotion when okay. 
Breonna Taylor and George Floyd had uh, the the outrage over that. And we were saying abolish, or at the time, it was um, defund the police, right? Yeah. And everybody was like, you know, defund, defund, this can't be happening. It's, you know, whatever. He gets on there and was like, one thing about it is, yeah, all that talk y'all doing. And this is my same, I was going to say his name, but my same old friend. The one that used to be like, Wu-Tang with an A. You know, every time we go out, bop with your boy, just dancing, compa, everything. Like, that is my friend. But he done told these people, I don't know what kind of energy, that cop energy, it just it just takes over. Mm. He done told the people on his friends list, on the people's Facebook. And he said to those people, family and friends, he said, I don't care what it is. I don't care whatever y'all talking about. But just know all that talk y'all doing about cops, come say it to my face. Oh, I will. Hey, where he at? <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just so saying like, that hurts my I soul really, so much. It, it, so it took me, it, like it took me back. I mean, it was like, I mean, Essentially, the same way he's saying that all cops aren't the same, but the way that he was saying it was like, you know, it like y'all keep coming at me saying defund the police or what am I saying or what am I doing? But that all that talk y'all doing, come say that same stuff to me as a cop. And he's a whole lieutenant. And I was like, should I send this over to his um, <laughs> where he <laughs> works his department? But I'm like, mm. that's my friend that he been my friend. And um, mm. I didn't want to do him like that, though. So um, I kind of quietly sent him a message and I was like you know, that post is disrespectful. And he was like, everybody being disrespectful about cops. Mm. And I was like, before you became one, you were on that side too. So right. just remember that you have a duty as a cop not to be that way, but also not to forget how it felt being black driving mm. down 95. Right. So, how, um, to be, how it felt to be black driving down I-95. Because mm. soon they put on that uniform, they seem to be like, yeah, oh, I'm a cop now. And, and we got to wrangle these black folks. Because they, they, that, because that officer, Officer Dingle, Major Dingle in that video, dude lost his damn mind. He really thinks and, somebody's supposed to, you chose that career, bro. Right. And you know, not all of them, not all of them might not be bad, but you, like yeah, the story that Rebecca that. just said, that's, that's the part that, kills me because y'all know what it was like y'all get that put that uniform on and y'all basically become them like yeah. literally when i say them yep. you know what i'm talking about the real meaning yeah. of what the word police was yeah <laughs> that, that, that's okay. them. the overseers I mean, um and it's funny because like they all you get you put the uniform on and it's like you just become that like you yeah. you abuse authority you think that everybody yes. should be bowing at your feet when you pull up on them yep. behind them to scare them or when you um take the red light and there's no emergency or when like you're walking on foot behind somebody there's nothing happening but you feel like because they looked at you wrong or you know whatever you can now pull out your cop powers you know what i mean and have a knee on somebody's neck like mm. it's just it's all mm. just too much and no matter if they're black or white they all walk in that particular like they think they have that power that same blue line and, that same blue they yeah, they're the black thin, or white they blue and blue line they will walk right on it that thin mm. blue line but they don't understand once they take off that uniform you're just a black man yep. or you could have the uniform on, my goodness. Come on. And I've still seen, be treated that way. How many so. times have we right. seen undercover agents have, like, I've seen too many stories of officers who are either off duty or undercover who are black and they get profiled just like a regular black person. And this officer, I, you know, I, I, I tweeted back at him. I said, bro, if you don't, if you don't go take your blood person meds <laughs> and go sit down somewhere and retire, uh, cause these cops would do to you the same thing that is being done to everybody else with no hesitation <laughs> and for him you know people do anything for clout right yep. he's like oh i'm gonna put this video I, I the video the original video had him uh I, i'm pretty sure the music was playing in the background so he was really feeling himself he was in the moment like, i'm so tired somebody added that music somebody added I'm that like, music nah, bro, i think it's, I, I think he's you that dramatic good, Oh, okay. I think he I think I think he uh, I think he really was feeling himself as though and he's going to get all the props. But check where he getting the props from. See, that's why you got to be careful not to be excited just because some people applaud you because you got to wonder who is applauding you. Mm. The people who are applauding him are the white supremacists who marched up the steps on January 6th. 
right? Because they all the same. I don't care if you were there or if you weren't there, you still part of them. All y'all marched up those steps on January 6th. Every single one mm. of y'all racist, white supremacists, Donald Trump supporters, conservatives fighting against critical race theory, every one of y'all is the same. Right. And those are the people who are celebrating this brother and tweeting him, retweeting. He got a million views. I guarantee you, you know, you get that rush of getting a million views. I guarantee you he's sitting in his car right now thinking, what can I say next? <laughs> what can I, what music can I play in the background next so that I can keep that going? And then he's going to find himself performing just like Candace Owens, just like Paul. Uh, 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 what is it? Denard. I can't think of his first name. Paris Denard. All these black conservatives who are out there performing for these cliques because they got applauded. But you got applauded by the people who would kill you once you take that uniform off, okay. brother. So. Mm. Hello, is somebody there? Is somebody home? Who was on okay. the other line? <laughs> Hello? Shirley, this is what? <laughs> Shirley. Hello, Barbara. This is Shirley. Hello, Shirley. This is Barbara. Hello, Barbara. This is Shirley. Yeah. Shirley. <laughs> Shirley, this is Barbara. <laughs> anyway. I know you don't know me, <laughs> <laughs> but I know you. <laughs> Why do we all know that? Oh my goodness. Hey, if y'all know that in the audience, put it in the chat room, put it in the comment section. All right. And these are the same people. The people applauding that major dingle. <laughs> Bro, if my name was Dingle, I just would lay low. I would change my name. I'm putting Mr. Dingle. Professor like Dingle. Not, uh, Pastor Dingle. Uh, like you know what? Dingle is no from um, what's that? What's that show? Reno 911. I think oh, his name man. is Officer Dingle. Yeah. <laughs> He was wore the low, real short shorts. I think it was Officer Dingle. Oh, I can see that. You oh see? There's a reason why he was. <laughs> it was. You I right. could definitely see it. It was right Dingle. <laughs> Bro. Dang, that, that's a joke in itself now. Now that makes it, it even is. funnier. Major Dingle? Really? What the? Major, if my name was Major Dingle, I think it's Dingle, but Dingle is good. Um, yo, I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to go viral if my name was Major Dingle. And that's all they see. Like, bro, cover up your name because you could have gone viral without them knowing your name. But he wanted them to see. He, he proud of him being Major Dangle. And he put that sad music in the background. But anyway, the people who applaud and sharing that video, um, they are a part of the 70 percent of Republicans who still Joe, who still think Joe Biden lost in 2020. According to a recent poll commissioned by CNN, 70 percent of Republicans do not think Joe Biden won enough votes to be the president. Also, according to this recent poll, 46 percent of Americans feel that election rules are not strict enough to prevent illegal votes from being cast. While 45 percent say the bigger issue is that the rules make it too difficult for eligible citizens who want to vote to cast a ballot. These two numbers are within the margin of error. So it's a statistical t tie. And that's terrifying when you have basically half of this country who believes in the big lie that Donald Trump has been pushing, right? That there is something wrong with our voting system and that it allows people to vote illegally. That is the lie that they are coalescing around. And that's what they are absolutely trying to build these laws up, up on across the country. We see the voter suppression laws that are happening here in the state of Georgia. And so to have that high percentage of people who actually believe that it is true, they believe as a statement of truth, even though it is false, they believe that it is too easy to vote in this country for illegal people to vote. Well, let's take a look at this clip of CNN correspondent Dan O'Sullivan as he discusses these findings, as he discussed these findings and also had an interview with an Arizona Republican who also said that he does not believe Joe Biden is uh, the president. duly elected president of the United <laughs> States. Mm -hmm. uh, this conspiracy theory has been 70 percent, 70 percent of Republicans do not believe that Joe Biden uh, had enough votes to win the presidency, that he that he didn't legitimately uh, win the election, essentially. I mean, it's really quite remarkable when you think uh, when you see that number, um, as you mentioned, in Arizona right now. Votes have been checked and checked and checked again. This so-called audit, which has been described as farcical, essentially, even by Republican election officials in that state, is still giving Trump supporters, some Trump supporters online and offline, uh, the false sense of hope that the election could still be overturned. I met one uh, this week in Texas. Have a listen. Were you disappointed when Trump lost the election? Uh, I was disapp uh, disappointed in the... Uh the lack of truth and the uh, and the election fraud that took place within it, and it's it's coming out right now in Arizona, and it's going to be a domino effect to the truth that's moving forward. What happens after that, I don't know, but I know that the truth is 
There's only so many uh, voters that are in one county that can vote, and the numbers far exceed that. It's common sense mathematics. But you, there, you, there's no way now that the 2020 election result could change, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not making that call. It's not my call. But uh, if, if we'll see what the uh, institution decides once the truth comes out. And Jim, look, this is silly stuff, frankly. I mean, but it can't be ignored, unfortunately. These are the exact same conspiracy theories that helped fuel the January 6th insurrection. And Johnny, right. let's turn to Florida. Even though as, as silly as it is, it can't be ignored. On CBS's uh, Face the Nation, Nation with John Dickerson, a uh, Republican senator from South Carolina, uh, was asked about that 70% number and how Republicans can have any common ground with Democrats if they legitimately believe that Joe Biden was not elected. I want to get your your you on the record about one final thing, if I may, Senator. You talked about yes, having sir. an honest conversation and about common sense and common ground. Seventy percent of your your party Absolutely. think that Joe Biden is illegitimate because the election was stolen. How do you have common ground with that belief? Well, by moving on, the the election is over. Joe Joe Biden is a president of the United the States, the legitimate president. And now what we have to wrestle with, of course he is. Well, now what we have to wrestle with is. Can we spend six to six and a half trillion dollars and raise taxes by four to four and a half trillion dollars and create a better America? My All answer right, is no, because oh, the American government to. can't be responsible for everything. Senator, thank you so much. We got to go there and we'll be right. Now, in order to defend the recent voter suppression in, in Georgia, the bill in Georgia and elsewhere, as well as defend Republicans who believe that the election was illegitimate, former Gen Georgia Senator Kelly Loeffler appeared on Fox News with Neil Cavuto. It did not go as planned. Let's take a look at this. Making sure that everyone's voice is heard. All right. So it, it, if we have an investigation into that, it would be investigations after other investigations. This one more focused, I guess, on the behavior of, of Mr. Raffensperger. But... Um, you would charge that you want to probe into whether he used his office to his advance his political interest. He was supporting you and, and, and your, your colleague. So how was that opposite what your interests were? You were both on the same page. Uh, that's not exactly correct. I mean, look, he's our top elections official. He's not a, a partisan official per se. But my well, he focus wasn't, he is wasn't not for your, this. But he wasn't for your opponent, right, Senator? He was for you. He was for Senator Purdue. And well, so look, what would look, be in his interest to sabotage that? Not, not suggesting sabotage. I'm suggesting that Georgians don't trust voting right now. And he took actions that led to a lack of confidence. <sighs> So Republicans, Rebecca and James, Republicans are using this big lie to justify dozens of voter suppression bills across the country. And these bills are absolutely going to make it more difficult for black folks to keep electing folks into power. And again, this is all a part of their long game. They got a strategy, man, and they're sticking with it. Yeah, they are. And I say this, y'all, regardless of any laws they put in place, we have to be vigilant and we're going to find ways Damn yeah. it. Just like we always do, we'll we gonna do this damn thing, regardless of what they say. As what the black people say, irregardless. Irregardless of what they say. <laughs> irregardless. Irregardless. <laughs> irregardless of what they talk we about. Hey, I, hey, I promise you, they might as well y'all might as well update the dictionary because irregardless is is, is, is a word. Is, is irregardless of what you Irregardless okay. if you like it or not. No, go ahead, Rebecca. <laughs> if, irregardless if you like it or not, we gonna pull up. Every single time y'all try to put something in place for us to not go vote. Yeah, um, right. The simple things that you guys put out, the harder things that you guys put out. Do you think that, and it's so stupid that we still got to be, uh, yes. what is it going through things that don't kill us, but make us stronger? Strong, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yo. You know, right. we talk about this all the time. I don't want to go through things that don't kill me, but yeah. make me stronger. I just want to just chill. Live, for a bit. I want to <laughs> bask in the fact that we have the ability to vote like to yes. actually you know be okay and possibly mail in these ballots and you know be all right and protect ourselves from the virus or protect ourselves from the virus that is white supremacy um you know we want like we didn't even get a second to enjoy it we didn't um no. but we've come far than uh, our ancestors but at the same time it's like they want to place us again in this box and make it so hard for us yeah. and um, make it so that we don't want we 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 are exhausted and do not want to fight anymore. Whoa, that was a lot of lightning behind mm. me. But um, mm. 
girl. Yeah, so it's just like we we but we're still like like Bubba said, and like we constantly stay on the show. And like Cliff Albright, you know, who is an activist yeah. here, who comes on and lets us know that he's gonna be fighting like nobody's yeah. business. Like Representative um, Representative Renette, Renetta Sh- uh, Shannon, she's always gonna do the same thing. Representative Park Cannon, who was dragged out for wanting yeah. to see that man, Governor Kemp, sign those uh um those laws uh and and he she wanted to look at him in his face and see that that like i said see satan in his eye <laughs> um and but it was dragged out but people are gonna be willing to put you know put themselves in the way of danger and for yeah. the fight until it's it's no more and we don't know when that day is gonna be but we tired don't think that we're not tired it's but don't right. think it's, 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 it's right it's not that it's gonna well, be so that we're so tired that we're not gonna continue exactly we say we, the word we, then yeah 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 what you say we don't want to just because something makes us stronger don't mean we want to go through it we, exactly, we shouldn't bro. have to and what you what we um how we 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 tired of singing we're tired of having to overcome mm. but but we're gonna keep on overcoming that's what we said last week like, we we gonna, we, we'll stop. <laughs> we're gonna that song is just miserable in itself too <laughs> No, no like, offense. That's a, it is. That's it OG is. Song. This is true. Right. Okay, but singing it just makes me feel like it's just like we're dragging. Like, nah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be up. Mm. Then it's stuck. Like something. Uh, like that. Uh, but like uh, a uh, Alexa, <laughs> play up by Cardi B. Ah, ah, ah. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, listen, I got oh a couple more clips. Did it start playing? Oh, I thought it started playing. Okay, okay. Uh, mine um, did. I'm sorry, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with this real quick. Like, have a- <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all know CIA agents. Y'all got in y'all in y'all bedrooms, but I digress. Um, <laughs> hell, I guess my I keep saying that, and then I realize the phone is worse than Alexa. So anyway, um, I got a couple of clips that I think everyone is going to uh, find interesting. At least this first one: uh, Mitt Romney attended a state party convention on Saturday, where members voted a- on a resolution to censure him for voting to remove Trump from office. Okay, I want to set the stage. Now, I have to give them props for showing up, but Republicans are upset at this man because he voted to impeach. Well, he, he voted to remove Donald Trump during the impeachment trial. Um, obviously, that failed, but Republicans did not forget as he approached the podium to deliver his address. You can hear a loud chorus of booing and yelling, um, and it only gets better from there. Let's take a look at it. a person who, uh, who says what he thinks, and I don't hide the fact that I wasn't a fan of our last president's character issues, and I'm also no fan Aren't you embarrassed? And I'm also no fan of the... Now, I have to give him props for standing there and taking that like a champ. <laughs> but you also got to know when to fold him, uh, Mitt Romney. Uh, he isn't the only prominent Republican being dragged for not 100 percent backing Donald Trump's election lies. On CNN, Jake Tapper asked Maine Senator Susan Collins if she thought it's dangerous to be a Republican like Liz Cheney, who, quote, tries to stand up for facts and truth regarding the election and insurrection. Susan Collins declined to answer the question. Uh, at least she didn't really answer the question. Let's take a look at it. If you look at what's going on in the House among Republicans, I mean, some Republicans, including Kevin McCarthy and Steve Scalise, are attacking and trying to undermine Congresswoman Liz Cheney uh, just for fist bumping Biden on the floor, also uh, for speaking out against Trump's lies uh, about the election. Uh, They're obviously also upset she voted to impeach the president. Is it politically dangerous to be a Republican like Liz Cheney, who tries to stand up for facts and truth, regarding the election and the insurrection. Liz Cheney is a woman of strength and conscience, and she did what she felt was right, and I salute her for that. We need to be accepting of differences in our party. We don't want to become like too much of the Democratic Party, which has been 
taken over by the progressive left. We need to have rooms for a variety of views, especially since we adhere to those core principles that I mentioned earlier. After President Trump was impeached for the first time for urging Ukraine's president to investigate Joe Biden, you said that you believed, you hoped that the president had learned his lesson. Now, I know you said that that was aspirational. Um, but after Biden won, the president obviously attempted to overturn the legitimate election results. It culminated in the Capitol attack. Do you ever wonder? So I, I, I don't know what she wonders there, but it did culminate in the in the attack and actually culminate suggests that that was the height of what they are attempting to do. I think culminate is the wrong word there mm -hmm. because I think that was just the beginning of what these Republicans and conservatives and Donald Trump supporters are trying to do. Uh, but finally, I want us to take a look at Wyoming, Wyoming Republican Senator John Barrasso, as he also spoke on a ABC about Republicans like Liz Cheney. And he couldn't. And, and before we play this clip, I want to be sure Liz Cheney is garbage. I just I just need to put that on the record for everybody to know her politics are just as crappy. Right. Um, it's just that she acknowledges that Joe Biden is the president. And because she acknowledges that Joe Biden is the president, it creates this opportunity for Donald Trump supporters to attack her. The reason we're looking at these other officials who are afraid to even defend Liz Cheney because they're not going to step out there for themselves, it's because they understand if they are not 100% in lockstep with Donald Trump, even though he's no longer the president, then their, their political future is, is spotty at best. They know Donald Trump can have them removed, even though I think Susan Collins still has a couple of years left. But I digress. The point is, take a look at this next coward as he also sidesteps uh, whether or not he's going to support Liz Cheney because she's now under attack because she's not 100 percent supportive of Donald Trump. Take a look. Within your party, former President Trump continues his attacks on leaders you work closely with, including Mitch McConnell, including Liz Cheney there in uh, Wyoming. How damaging, damaging is that, what the president is doing to your party? Well, President Trump has a remarkable record of accomplishment in his administration. I mean, working together, President Trump, along with Leader McConnell in the Senate, we were able to confirm three justices to the Supreme Court, conservative justices. We were able to rebuild the economy, cut taxes, eliminate regulations, rebuild the military. It was the strongest economy, really, but, in but a generation. But let's go back to Mitch McConnell and Liz Cheney. Some people are trying to get Liz Cheney out. But we need to get beyond all of this and focus on the 2022 elections so that we can win back the House, win back the Senate, get united on the things on which we agree, and then successfully stop the far extreme efforts of this Biden administration uh, and those that are <laughs> taking the country towards socialism. OK. Yeah. Can y'all be like. I know this is kind of in the weeds, politically speaking, but Donald Trump got so much power that the Republican Party that's in charge now, that are in office now, they can't even say they disagree with them. They can't even say that Joe Biden is the duly elected president without getting completely attacked by Donald Trump and his supporters. And they are scared. Every single one of these politicians is scared. What do you think about it, Rebecca? Look like, like Bubba crazy as hell. Um, no, it literally, to me, just shows us that they're... They're just as dumb. They've been dumb, but they will keep this man in power when he's not in power. Why yeah. are people still keeping Donald Trump? And what what deal did y'all sign with the devil? Is what I'm saying. <laughs> that you still have to keep saying his name when he's not even in office anymore. You, it's okay, guys. Now you know. Go back to being that other Republican that you were before he was in office. Um, try that because it's it, like at this point, why? What was it that? What's the hold that he has on you guys? And, you know, knowing how sneaky and how um, Donald Trump may have some things in his pocket, maybe he has a lot on every single person and probably sent them an email on his last day um, in office saying, if you all don't support me, this is what I'm going to do. You know, you was over here on this time. You know, you was doing this at this time. You know, you was laundering money over here in this country. You know, yeah, I know you're out here doing all of this. So he probably has something on everybody to make them feel shook or people feel like they need to get. They need to keep him feeling like he's in control so that if he does decide to run or whatever or put somebody else 
in his likeness <laughs> mm-hmm. to try to run, mm-hmm. um, it, it'll all work out in his favor. Um, so keep the support going, keep the clan going, <laughs> uh, keep the cult out there, wow. keep him, the at, you know, pulling up. Inside of the insur- uh, inside of the, the the insurrection, the terrorist attacks happening right there at the Capitol. They're going to move towards the White House. So this is what they're trying to do. Yep. They're trying to make it yep. bigger and better. So um, doing this, and then within the next four years of Biden, and keeping it strong within his first term, will uh, and and keeping the terrible uh, conspiracy theories and rhetoric and wrong narratives that that man did not win no matter how much <laughs> like it the numbers aren't lying. Um, yeah. That man didn't win. And then creating these voter suppression laws because yep. of that. This is all because of Donald Trump. This is him taking it to, you know, Supreme Court and all fighting it. And then the, the, the you know, capital situation happening and, you know, him going on Fox News saying that he won fair and square. All of this. All of y'all gave him this platform. And that's why he feels like he is king to this day, because yep. y'all still are giving it to him, even though he has no TV appearances Nobody's really going to his um, uh, <laughs> press meetings, and yeah. but we still getting the information some way, some because these people still believe in what he 70%, said. Seventy percent, seventy percent of Republicans, hard. a whopping seventy percent of dumbasses. Seventy <laughs> percent of dumbasses do not believe that Joe Biden oh, Biden is the legitimate president. Y'all, that's that's <sighs> dangerous, man. It One really thing I would. Is. Yeah, James, get in there because I'm about to say, man, they're going to tear this country apart with their stupidity. Oh, yeah. That's all I was going to say is just like Trump. As I say all the time, I'm like, why the hell are we still talking about him? Right? He's not even relevant. Him. He's a joke. Yeah. He's a, he's right. a damn joke. That's why I make fun of him all the time. Irregardless. Hey, speaking, of the speaking of irregardless, so many people in the chat room said that it's a word now. I had to go check. Yeah. Webster's Dictionary has put it in, uh, 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 I think they're saying it's a, a non-traditional, <laughs> is so a, uh, now a non-standard I, I word. It. Yeah. Okay. So and people in other words, it's not in my vocabulary it's in the, anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's in the Urban Dictionary then, basically is what Webster's yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Look, Web says every time blue, the urban Web says is saying y'all gonna keep saying this word so much I, I never honestly that's that's one of the words I don't have a problem with. Like I have uh, problems with plenty of other words because English is stupid. Like I'm sorry. English is one of the dumbest languages. Like you how, know, how, now that I think about it, it, that language is pretty much colonized as well. English uh <laughs> it, English it, colonized it's so many languages it's so, just so get what a, it did. Exactly it, it's, it's like, taken from everywhere. <laughs> Like they'd be like this. This word derives from the Latin such and such, and this word right. derives from the nah. French, and this word, and then but it's like some of y'all words derive probably from like Africans as well. Like we come on now, y'all are it's, really. It's just too many color. different ways. It's too many different ways to say like one vowel, man. Like come on, it's it's just too much. It, it, it's just too much. So I I I think English is is a substandard language. But I digress. The point is is that um, English ain't even all that. Like th- they, it's not even like you know the language of love. Well, we make it better, uh, right? You know, French, and then but you know what's really like, cool about English though when you black and you're black American. <laughs> and you, uh, yeah, and African, yes, uh, American can, vernacular. Yes, you can switch it up, and then when you're Haitian <laughs> on top of it, then you because you can go into the hood accent, add all that, and then turn around and speak another language, and they'd be like. How? Because <laughs> black people can speak other languages too. Like, stop being dumb. Okay. Like, it's more efficient. This is what I say. Uh-huh. This is what I say uh, about uh, uh, um, whatever you want to call it, ebonics or AAVE, African American vernacular. It's just more efficient. Y'all use too it many really syllables is. to say to say right. like to say the simplest things. You got to have like eighteen syllables, and we 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 said we're gonna break that thing down to about six. All right, so um, that it's just. A, I'm it's going just to, a, to the store. Thank you, thank you, Rebecca. Really, Rebecca. To, we said the same I'm thing at the same, the same time. time. I'm, I'm going to go to the store because yeah. that is simple. Who is saying I'm going to go to Walmart? No, I'm going to go to the store. Or I'm going <laughs> to go to the Kroger. Or I'm going to go. You know. Wait, it's hey, easier. We need to get Finna put in the dictionary. <laughs> it needs Finna. a Finna, Finna needs to be in there next. F I N N A. Hey, exactly. We all know how to spell it. It's, it's literally F I N N A. I never will forget. We're going to get ready to go to the after party. After party, we got oh, a whole lot that, more that's videos. A, oh, that's a wait, super wait, chat. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That you see it, Rebecca, chat. too? I saw that. You know, hey. I see money all the time. <laughs> <laughs> 
Read the super chat, job uh, before I get my study. My, my, uh. All right, Tija says, "Love you all. You are one of the very few who keep bringing the voter suppression laws to the forefront." The rest gave it initial coverage, but that seems to be it. They have mm. already pushed some through in Florida. Yes, thank yeah. you so much for your super chat, child. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you. you. Look, I think hey, it's listen. Tasia. Listen, it's we Tasia. think Tasia. Hey, Tasia. See, you, see, see, that's the thing. Like I be Tasia. reading stuff, and I be wanting to read stuff the way I would read it, but then I'm like, nah, you know, these white folks pronounce stuff weird, so you'd be like, Tasia or something. <laughs> nah, yeah, look, Tasia. 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 Is Tasia in the room? Tasia. Exactly. Tasia, Tasia man. Hey, Aaron. Tasia. Hey, Aaron. Tasia. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it's like, Aaron. Nah. <laughs> hey, Aaron. I never forget. This story isn't as funny as what we just got through saying, but I never forget. Like every time I saw one of my professors uh, in my in my political science program, he would always say, "Good morning, Benjamin. How are you?" And and I would be like, "How you doing?" And then it's just like, and then he just every day he was like, "Benjamin, how are you?" And I'm like, "How you doing?" And I'm like, "Wait a minute, wait." He's saying it differently. It took me in a, a damn entire semester to unprogram myself from saying how you doing to saying how are you and every time i say it now i'm like why am i working this why am i using this many many syllables when all i got to say is how you doing that's the difference between english and 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 african aave because it's just more efficient cut out some of them syllables and let's get to where we're going and where we're going right now is the after party like it or not.com forward slash uh i'm sorry patreon.com forward slash like it or not we need you to become patrons. I said it at the top of the show. I'm going to say it at the end of the show. We need your support to continue doing what we are doing. We need 500 patrons. We're getting there slowly but surely. That is our first goal. 500 patrons. Go and become a patron at any level, but preferably like, you know, some of them higher tiers are open to people too. Um, like it or not.com. Rebecca, get your last word and then James, take us to uh, the after party. Um, I, you know, I hate that I'm not here for majority of the beginning of the show, but your con- contribution <laughs> to <laughs> our Patreon will get me further to becoming free and being right here with you guys every morning on time at 8 30 a.m. So a free Bubba free Becca, get head over, like Ben said, to patreon.com forward slash like it or not. And for everybody free who's ben going Dixon. to the after party, <laughs> Free Ben Dixon, but Ben Dixon used to be a free man. I remember when we had that in your Twitter. I said, I aspire. I aspire. Hey, okay. I aspire. Hey. Hello. Hey, hey, we're we, we, we going to, we go, we go. <laughs> go ahead, James. I'm sorry. Finish, Rebecca. Go ahead. No, but um, um, you guys meet us in the after party. Go ahead, James. <laughs> and uh, real quick, uh, Colin Sherbert sent the super chat, said, the stove. <laughs> it's cold for we going to spark S-T-O. up that lunch. Stow. Hey, you want to go to the stove? The stove. Because anyway, who got time to say like, store? To store? Who gonna right. go to, you going to go to the store for me? No. Nah, nah. <laughs> it takes effort. It, t- it takes a lot of effort. That's all I like. Well, store. you know, you growing up in the, in, in the suburbs, you try. You're like, hey, you want to go to the store? But then my black friend, Warren Keisha, at school, she'd be like, girl, we're going to go to the store. And I, and I knew the store was where they had the hot sausages and the pickled eggs and the and chips. The pickled eggs. Cents, and, you know, the candy. <laughs> that was the, Omar's you know, down in Pompano. I wonder if anybody yeah, so. in from South Florida, Omar's a pump and we used to get, go over there during the middle school, skip, jump over the fence because they ain't let us out for campus. Jump over the fence for lunch and go and get the uh, gizzards with hot sauce and mustard. Fried gizzards, Ooh. hot sauce and mustard. And I'm hungry now. See, now I got to go get some breakfast. All three of y'all <laughs> just showed how country y'all really are. <laughs> Talking about some gizzards, some, some pickled eggs. Y'all some, y'all some country bammers, boy. We country. I we forgot country, we man. from the South. You don't know Dwayne up north, south. so he ain't you used to that. You know, where you are from the <laughs> South, you're going to have, like, something country in the area. And, yeah. you know, our countries may be different, but then it's like, at the same time, I get what you're doing, and I get what you're saying. I, you know, it's, right. just like yeah. folks from, it's just like folks from Philly saying Joan. You know what I mean? Like, how, you then, know, how would yeah. they predict a particular pronunciation? Down I, here, we say Joan. But then I you say too, Joan Dwayne. down here further in the South. Dwayne, but, you know. you're... Um, Virginia has like these countrysides and then you know I noticed that you know as you started to speak in my place when I wasn't here you <laughs> had a, a, a bit of a country tone to you as well so yes you do little, don't you know, flex that little, you know you got some yeah. Virginia country Dwayne Virginia ain't that country northern country no, I, ain't, a little I ain't gonna bit. lie I, I'm, I'm from all over the place I, I like to say I was but you might be Texas Oh, Girl there it is. Virginia, so, yeah, it's all over the place. You so the, uh, that explains a lot because I can hear the Texas a little right bit. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I think because right there, the difference between Virginia and Baltimore is the Mason-Dixon line, right? Isn't, isn't the Mason-Dixon line right there um, as Virginia turns into Baltimore, Maryland? Anyway, uh, I'll look it up. But uh, that's the, that's what separates. Dwayne, Dwayne I, was ain't come back look, I, ain't, I wasn't going to answer because I, I was <laughs> no good in geography. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that, like, that's, the, that's, that's literally where we de- we decide what's north and south uh, is at the Mason Dixon line. Anyway, uh, the Mason jar is filled with egg, pickled eggs, uh, which we're always discussing. I don't care how far from the south I am. Pickled eggs was always and hot and hot sausages. Ugh. Hot Take sausages. us to break. Take 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 us to the after party. Hey, thanks oh, to everybody you supporting. Mix it together in the bag and you squeeze it out like. <laughs> oh my god. god. You cut Girl, the you end of the so bag, like yeah. <laughs> and you bite it. You... <laughs> I'm going to get some water for this so we get this after party going. Y'all, wow, y'all done made my I love stomach turn really sick. Of this after party. <laughs> See y'all at the after party. <laughs> Shout out to y'all, man. Thank you so much for tuning in today, this morning, y'all. We are going to move over to the after party, y'all. And if you want access to the after party, join Patreon.com. Join and become a patron. Patreon.com slash like it or not. Patreon.com slash like it or not. And you can get access to the after party and keep the show going until 1030, y'all. We appreciate you. We love y'all so much. And we will see y'all in the morning, y'all. See y'all at the after party. Deuces. Throwing shots, running plots Come on, man Tryna block my blessings Been only for comparisons What's from me won't be from me Yeah I'ma go through Just to go through But pay me what you owe me for I make what you've been saying by me True, true Tell them I need my money right now Stitched all out my